good is that? He is alive. In light of the world, you step down into darkness. Oh, let me see and beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you so here I am to worship here I am to bow 
bow down Here I am to say that You're my God You're all together lovely All together worthy All together wonderful to me King of all days Oh so highly exalted Glorious in heaven above And humbly you came to the earth you created All for love's sake became born So here I am to worship Here I am to bow you say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me, and I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross and I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross and I'll never know how much it cost to see my together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me I'll never know Bring many 
sun's to glory so much for your love for us how amazing it was that you sent your one and only son for us in this room every one of us Lord you love deeply and more infinitely than we could ever understand and we thank you we give you all the praise and all the glory
Christ alone and know his power in quietness and trust and when the oceans so much that we can come here tonight and just be in your presence and we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. We love you. Amen. You take a seat. Tonight, um, tonight Jeremy and I are going to have a conversation. And it's going to be a conversation about Jude in, in our AM services where we, um, we are, are, are looking at this letter that was written by Jude. Now, w- when someone insults you, people will say, you know, those are fighting words. Um, and, and we all know that, that some things are, are fighting words. And that is, if, if, if there are, are some things that we, we care deeply about... Um, and they get, they get challenged by someone else. They're, they're fighting words. Um, I've heard a couple of guys also say, you know, in regards to that, you know, you, you can say whatever you want about me, but just don't say anything about my wife or my kids, you know, in regards to those sort of fighting words in which, uh, in which people have used. And that's probably fair enough. But is there, is there anything as a Christian that you will fight for, that you will die for? Or have we become so used to, um, used to sin and a sinful world and compromising that essentially anything goes in a place that anything goes, in a world that anything goes, that nothing actually makes us angry anymore? We allow a lot of things to go through to the keeper. There are times when we need to stand up. There are times when we need to actually contend for the faith lest we lose it altogether. There is a, is, is a, a command of, or, or, or to stand and, and do everything that we can to stand is actually a command of God. And so we, we better not ignore it. There are some truths that are worth fighting for and some things that are so evil that we need to actually oppose them, no matter what. And tonight, the conversation that Jeremy and I are going to have, we're going to try and unpack a little in regard to this sermon series that we're in as a church and this letter of Jude to the believers. Because what, was, what, what we might discover was happening in the church could be reflective of what is happening in our culture today. So I'm going to invite Jeremy. He's going to come and help me unpack um, this letter that we have to the, the, the church. Thanks, mate. I'm going to stand for a bit too, but you can see. Lean on both yeah. sides. Sorry. We haven't done a sound check for my mic yet. It's a good. It's good. It's excellent. Now, um, now we had. Uh, uh, I, I, I've been recently back from holidays, and um, and I, I actually come back, and, and Jeremy said, um, mate, the the first second Kings preaching series that I've done actually was awesome. It went over really well. And I said to him, well, that's great. I've got nothing. (laughs) I I, I don't know exactly where we're heading. I don't know what the Lord has for us next as a church. Um, I said, God's been pretty silent. Anyway, the next day, um, I said, so, you know, I'm spending this this next few days just really praying about that and considering. He come back the next day and he said, I really think we should do Jude. And I read it. And I read his notes and I come back and I said, well, I think you're right. I 
think that is a really good uh, letter for us to do as a church. Now, Jeremy, the, the context of Jude. Yeah. Do you, want to, um, do you want to talk to us a, a little bit about the context of Jude? What, where, where did we find it? When was it written? Who was it written to? What was happening in the church at the time? Um, those types of things. Let's, let's sure. get that. So, um, Jude is brother of James, is a, as a brother of Jesus. But Jude's writing to a church that's immersed in a situation where they've, they've been receiving false teaching. They've been receiving some, some what they call super spiritual truths, that's what we call them, yep. kind of thing. And so Jude actually, he wanted to write this letter to the church. And he was excited about writing this letter to the church. And then he actually changes the way he was going to write it because he wanted to actually go, let's talk about how good the faith is that you guys have. But then he had to switch it up just before he wrote it. That's what he says. Yep. He says, I have to warn you about where you're going and what's happened in your church. Yep. And so we find them that he's, he's warning them against false teachers. He's warning them about self-deceptions. Yeah? Like th he's warning them about these people in the church actually have been deceived, but they believe that they're actually thinking on the truth. They're actually believing all these things that are not true. They, they, he was excited about going, hey, you guys are following Jesus, that's great, but now you're just starting to believe the wrong things. Okay. These, uh, these false teachers in the, ch in the church, um, false teaching obviously isn't a uh, new thing no. back in the church, particularly in the early church. Now, uh, as far as I understand, they were Gnostics um, that, were, that were being part of the trouble in the, in, yeah. the, in the new church. Do you know much about Gnostics? Well, Gnostics, in my understanding, limited understanding of Gnostics, it's when... Like Gnostics come from a Greek tradition, so they're they're, Im they're immersed in a Greek society, and their traditions are creeping in yep. to the church. And so, when when the church is established, there was a firm line against no, we don't believe in these practices that you've been following before. But now these practices are starting to creep back in again. So the Gnostics are saying, if you want to have true fellowship, then you'll do this and this and that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. As for, from, from my understanding, I don't know if you guys know too much about what Gnostics are, there was this, this special revelation that they had and that's what they added on top of salvation. They said, yeah, you can be saved, that's great, but if you haven't had a special revelation, Jesus, are you really saved? Mm. Um, and, uh, and they based their, you know, some of their, their misleading um, ideas based around those, um, those incorrect res um, revelations of Christ. Now, Gnostics weren't the only ones around... Uh, in the early church, there was a Judaizers. Yeah. Um, and of course, there were a lot of the Greeks and Roman influences, um, pagan influences around the church at that time as well. Um, what is it about false teachers that Jude really is trying to get to, you know, get across to the church? What is it about these guys that are so dangerous? Sure, you can summarise all the false teachers into gospel plus, yeah? It's Jesus plus. So whether it's Gnostics, whether it's the Judaizers, whether it's any other thing that's coming into their teaching, it's always gospel plus. So it's the teaching, yes, it's great to have Jesus being the only reason here, but let's just start creeping in with, yeah, but you've got to have this special revelation or you've got to actually follow this tradition. You've actually got to be circumcised or you've got to follow this weird thing that we've always done. So this is happening, I think, just before the Council of Nicaea, I think, around that time and where Paul also is going around. Peter speaks of the same thing yeah. and he's talking about, hey, we've got to follow Jesus only and, and Jesus alone. In, in actual fact, I think Second Peter and Jude are, are very similar in the letters that that are written. Um, in actual fact, there's a lot of a lot of word for word. You know how the Gospels? You read the Gospels and you see some of the Gospel reflected in another Gospel. That that's some of the discussion that some scholars have to say that that's sort of what happened here. Both Peter and Jude um, actually compared notes and uh, and then included bits and pieces from their own notes in regards to because they were facing the very similar. Yeah. Um, instances and, and examples in their church um, and so these guys got there and said well how can we best, best 
encourage the church and warn the church against these false teachers. And so that's why you get those similarities between Jude and Second Peter. Now, that's, that's, the, that's the context in which we, which, you know, we find the book of Jude in. Yeah. Why, why today, though? Like, what, what is it about that book, of, that book of Jude or that letter of Jude? Why are we looking at that church uh, as a church? Sure. So if we look outside this church body a bit, when we look at the church global, then we see obvious false teachings. But then you actually you bring it in and you look at individual people in the church and you go, what does everyone here actually believe? And w- what is everyone here listening to outside of these sermons and, and what books are we reading and, and what parts of the Bible don't we understand? What parts of the Bible have we been taught miscorrectly, like a little bit, bit different? And so I believe while we can, all, we can easily identify the big false teachings, there's false teachings that are in this church. There are false teachings that are in this community and there's stuff that we actually believe is truth but it's actually, it's an almost truth. And so this is where where we're at and so Jude, he's warning against the people from just going, hey look, you're following an almost truth but you're starting to go off the track and that's where we are. I'm not saying that this church is off the track but if we look at it all ourselves individually then we've got to take a good hard look in the mirror and go, am I really following the truth? Let's have a look in that mirror. Let's see what is truth. Yeah. Do you want to uh, um, talk about any of the, the false teachings that might be around in Christianity Yeah, sure. Today? So, if we look at the Gospel Plus ones, that they're pretty obvious. I mean, there's ones that, you know, what the Gnostics had back then, but we can see it in today's age, which is, you know, ones like, if you don't speak in tongues, then you're not saved. And that's a pretty common one in churches today. And that's a false teaching. Uh, speaking in tongues is a gift of the Holy Spirit, but it's not that you have to have it in order f- for salvation purpose. Yeah? But there's other ones that will say that you actually have to um, believe a certain way about the end times. Otherwise, you're not saved. And people cling to that a lot rather than focusing back on, on bringing people to Christ. But speaking about these things that are the plus to the gospel that people cling to, it's good to talk about those things, but it's not good to base them as your faith and your foundations. Yep. So then what, uh, what other similarities do you see in today's church than that are similar back than when Jude wrote his letter? Sure, so we, um, not in this church particularly, but you can see churches slide away from the truth and you can see them sliding towards following after the world and, and just climatizing themselves to what the world accepts and wants them to preach and teach and their practices and you can start to see that, you know, I guess you can look at some churches are accepting gay marriage, some churches are um, accepting all these false teachings. And while it used to be one that was really hard line, that would not be the case. We're just starting to slow fade into that, yet we're starting to accept that as that's okay now. And so those churches will pay the punishment for that, I believe. Um, but yeah, the, the church today is losing its faith overall because it's not contending for true faith that Jude is putting forward in the beginning of your letter. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I think verse, verse 3 of Jude, um, I, I think that's his main thrust of his book or of his letter to the church. Because you know, this is where he writes, he says, Beloved... Although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I find it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. Yeah. So he, he had an intent in mind and that he's changed his intent to say, you know, I, I see that this is a very serious issue within the church and we need to address it. Um, I'm not sure that that's, that's, where I, that's what I see is verse 3. I don't know if you have seen it a little bit differently. Yeah, absolutely. But can you... Um, can you break down the 25 verses sure. for us? So, I see it, it, it's 
predominantly in three parts, but if you, if you look at the doxology at the end as an individual part, it's four parts. So in the beginning, Jude starts off with who a Christian is and, and what they believe and what um, a, a Christian should believe. And then he, he, he goes into what happens when the truth is not followed. What happens when someone walks away from their faith? What happens when someone actually says, well, no, I don't believe that anymore. And he looks at Old Testament examples. And he looks at the destruction that came upon them from God. And he looks about how God is just. Even though they're, they're deceived, that God is going to be just and the destruction is just. And so he, he sits in that for a little while. And that's it's a bit daunting to see because we, when we actually realize that, yes, we are in that same position or there are similarities, then it's actually pretty scary because these, these warnings are for the church for today as well. We can look at that and go, how far away have we gone away from just preaching the gospel? And that's not just preaching that Jesus died on the cross every week. That's talking about the life that comes through from Jesus' death and resurrection and what that means for us today. But then from that second part, he then steps into how do you get back what practical ways do you get back into a right relationship with God? And so he starts that off. I'm going to read a couple of verses here from verse 17. I don't know if I've given the multimedia person enough time to do that. Because he goes through all of these negative things about, about the destruction that's going to come upon them and the warnings from the past. And then verse 17 is great because it says, But... You, beloved, you ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, that they were saying to you, in the last time there will be mockers following after their ungodly lusts. There are ones who will cause divisions, worldly-minded, devoid of the Spirit. And then again, he says, but you, and this is where the practical application comes in. He says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up in the most holy faith, and I see that as, as you're putting your roots down into the ground, so you're building yourself up by putting your roots down in the ground so that when your faith is tested, that's, there's less shaking. There's like you're tested, but you are grounded in your faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourself in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of the Lord, Jesus Christ to eternal life, and have mercy on some who are doubting, save others, snatching them out of the fire, and on some have mercy with fear, hating even the garments polluted by the flesh. And so while we are aware of all these things that are happening to the church, and we go, that shouldn't be happening, Jude is saying, have mercy on these people. Reach out and show them the truth and actually bring them back into a right relationship with God. And it says here in that last verse, it says, hating even the garments polluted by the flesh. And that, as I've been reading this over and over again, it's, it's I mean, we've got to learn to hate sin. Hate sin so much that when we are faced with it, when we're actually faced with the false teaching, that we go, I don't want that. It might feel good and actually might seem like a, 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 a safe compromise. We've actually got to go, no, that's not of God. We've got to hate that hate that, that hating even the garment polluted by the flesh. So whatever's not of God, we've got to hate that. So yeah, and then so from that point of Jude actually saying, this is how you come back into relationship with God, and then, then the benediction or the doxology actually just says, there's only one God, and this is who he is. He reminds us of that, and then this is why you should follow him. So that's all 25 verses just summed up. And I'm thinking, it's a, it's a great book. Yeah. Yeah? Absolutely. I mean, Jude doesn't pull any punches. I don't know if you've just been flicking through it while Jeremy's been talking. He doesn't pull any punches when he starts talking about these false teachers. Yeah. I mean, he uses words. I was just looking here. He used words like, um, for whom the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved forever. Like... Christians don't speak like that, do we? <laughs> but I think that's, that's um, essentially what you're saying, is that we've, 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 got to, we've really got to 
hate sin and hate what these people are doing to the church because it's not, it's not the fact is that the, Jude's not this, this angry ranter. And, and I'm pretty sure that, that if, if, um, you know, if, the, if, if Jude was around in our day, he'd, he'd be off in the, the Cairns Post, you know, as on the front page saying, angry ranter Jude, you know, here we go again. Um, you know, silly Christian having a bit of a whinge and so on and so forth. But he doesn't pull any punches, but he isn't an angry ranter. He, he writes with a real deep concern um, and compassion for the people of God because he doesn't want the church to be led astray. He doesn't want the church to, to miss what, what God is going to do and to miss what um, you know, it means to have faith in, in the Lord Jesus. Um, and so he, he, in these handful of verses, he, he gives this fairly vivid picture of um, these apostates that are all around us. Now, if you look at some, some, maybe some false teachers that you might be aware of um, and then compare them to what Jude is saying here, you'll go, you know what, wow, that makes a lot of sense. Hmm. It makes a lot of sense and because we've got to hate. The fact is that they're pulling people away from the church through incorrect doctrine and incorrect teaching. But as you say, you start reading verse 17 and... Um, and, and onwards, and, and that's about how, you know, if we've been led astray or if we, if we have false teaching in our midst, that's how we turn it around. Yeah. Um, we, we do those things that he talks about there. Um, do you want to unpack a little bit more about his strategy there? Because it, it, it is a letter of hope. Sure. Because I, it's written to the church for I that I don't reason. know if I'm going to unpack the strategy, I want to unpack the reason why he's doing it. Yeah. Yeah, because the next verse, in verse 24, it says, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, remember that in the first couple of verses it's talking about who we are in Christ and our identity in him. And one of those, those four things was that we are protected in him. He's, he's keeping us. And so it says, He who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory blameless with great joy. And so that's what Jude's intention is. He wants us to come to Jesus and go, yeah, you can stand blameless before the Father. That's going to have some great joy. And that's his intention. And so I just want to share a story with, with what combined for me to actually go cool Jude actually really fits well because the timing of this letter about wanting to stand blameless before God is actually quite pressing on the church, quite pressing on the world because we're, we're coming to the end. Yeah, Jesus is coming back soon. Now, I've cleared it with my daughter and she gave me permission to share this and so I hope that's okay. She said 10 bucks if I do, but we'll see. <laughs> So don't do that. A you couple can't say that because I've got four kids, yeah. like you. They're broke. And, uh, and they will send me broke every yeah. time I give the, an example of them. Um, yeah. And even my wife might even start charging me as well for some of the examples that <laughs> I've been using. nameless there. stories. So don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a couple of weeks ago at, at the worship night um, where, sorry, the, the worship team like celebration night. And we were, we were at um, someone's lovely house. Thank you for that. But... And the families were there, and, and Erica was just sitting, sitting by the pool. Sorry, I named her now for good money. But she was sitting out there by the pool. And, and she hears from God saying, Jesus is coming back soon. Be prepared. Yeah, and, and when she hears from God, because this is the second time that it's been clear, she gets so excited, and then she, gets, she pulls me aside, and she goes, Dad, God spoke to me again. And this is what he said. And we can't argue with that. Yeah? Jesus is coming back soon and we need to be prepared. And so this letter is about, it's kind of a wake-up call. But scripture is, is a mirror for us. We're meant to look into the scripture and see if our faith actually lines up with what the scripture says. And if we have been self-deceived, then the mirror that we're looking into the lens that we're looking through is all blurry and we go, yep, that's right, that's right. But we need to come to a point where the scripture 
it's actually clear for us and we can look into it and we go, you know what, what I've been believing, what I've been taught, this, this false teaching that's come in that I haven't realised is actually there, we need to be catching that. I've been wandering down a path that's, that's been too far down and I've been doing things that are not of the scripture but I've been deceiving myself saying yes it's okay to do this because the world's compromised at the moment other people are doing it why can't I and so it, it's time for us it's time for everybody to go what is my true belief and I started out the series in, in verse 1 and 2 and saying that what you believe it's actually seen more in your actions than what you actually say. And so, if you're actually behaving one way but saying another, then I would actually say you don't actually believe that because you don't actually live that way. And it, it's a tough thing to say, but it's time for a wake-up call and go, Jesus come back, we've got to be ready to stand blameless before him and not just accept these things of the world that have been creeping in. Yeah, it's good. I think um, Jude gives us a, some really good um, ways or applications in which we can share our faith with others, particularly the faith, you know, and not just our personal faith, but the faith, as I sort of spoke about this yeah. morning, to say, you know, these are the, un these are, these are the things we, that we will not compromise on, which, you know, some people do compromise in, in, in some, um, some levels around the place. So... Um, you know, it was, I was just sharing before with someone here, you know, yesterday um, we, were, we were sitting just watching some sport, you know, and, um, and we we're having a conversation with, uh, with a guy there and, and you know, he, he sort of saying, oh, I don't know what's going on in the world. We don't know. We don't know what's going on in the world. It's just, it's, it's gone mad. This world's just gone mad. He says, so I don't have a clue what's going on what where is it all going to end and all of this type of stuff and and uh and i i, I turned around and i said to him i said you, you know you know that i'm a christian you know that i'm a pastor you know that i only work one day a week <laughs> split shit i said so i'm working overtime right now and i said but let me tell you i said because i am a christian i believe in the bible and i believe what the scriptures say um and i said the bible tells us exactly what is happening and so we need to, to need to know it and we need to then put it into practice so that we're able to as as peter says to give an answer for the hope that we have mm. if we think that jesus is coming back soon and that he's coming for us we we hope in that don't we and so we need to have something prepared ready to go to, to speak to our family and to our friends or to strangers, you know, um, like, the, like the outreach guys, you know, when they go out and things like that, you know, we've, we've got to be ready for that answer to be able to point them to the Lord Jesus. But we need to know our, 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 we need to know our own faith. We need to know what those non-negotiables are so yeah, that we absolutely. can hold and stand firm to them, which is what Jude is saying, yeah. you know, in that regard. Um, why should we invest time into this sermon series? We've, and, just, we've talked about it here. Why should we listen <laughs> to the said prepared series, you know, sermons and things like that? Well, it's... I see... I've been thinking about it a bit today, about that question, actually, and it's like I picture a couple driving down the road and they're obviously lost, but the man doesn't think he's lost and he's the one driving and the wife offers him you know maybe we should go this way but he is so prideful that he doesn't want to listen doesn't want to go no I'm not lost I'll get there in the end and, and pride stands before his accepting that yes I'll, I'm going to listen and turn this around and actually get back on track and so the reason why we need to invest and actually not just come to church and sit and, and listen and do nothing about it is that we need to really face up and see if our pride has stepped in the way of us going, have I actually gone off track? 
We can't actually see how far we've gone off track until we, one, we've known where we've come from, and two, someone actually shows us that we're off track. And so we need to actually have a good look at ourselves, look at the world, but look how far we've gone away from the truth, and then take these measures that Jude says and get back on track. And so we've talked about why it's important, Jesus come back. Yep. But let's, let's invest our time. I, I recommend if you can read Jude once every week, that's not hard. If you can do it every morning, that's great. It's 25 verses. If you can memorize the whole book, even better. Little chapter. No, there's only one chapter, yeah. Just, it's a great book to memorize, great book for a, a, a warning, but it's also a protection for us. Yep. See ya. That's good. All right. Excellent. Does anyone have any questions here tonight? Maybe you've been listening, maybe you want to ask a question, a burning question that you might want to ask. I'm just going to open up if anyone's got a question here, otherwise I'm, I'm just going to close. Yeah, yeah. And we read a lot about that, don't we, in, about the, the, the Judaizers coming into the church. Um, we read a lot about that in Galatians. Yeah, and, and Paul's dealing with the same issues, and, and it's, it is, it's essentially the same things. It's, the, it's salvation plus. Um, yeah. and, that, and, and essentially, when, we, when you boil it down, salvation plus isn't salvation. Um, and that's why, that's why we have the apostles really arguing and pushing and, and using very strong language in the church to be able to keep the church on track. So, yeah, it's early on. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. Oh. No worries. Well, yeah. Uh, that, that's um, now to him that doxology there was my, my nana's favourite <laughs> favourite um, chorus you know and uh, yeah so we, I know, all I can remember is uh, when I was younger we used to stand up at the back of the church and then we go hey would it keep you from fall and we'd all just fall over into seats you know because we were youth group kids and just that's what you do at the back of the church isn't it up the back um, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah but, good, that's a good suggestion Jenny that's good. I'll um, share it and I'll ch- check that out and I'll, um, I'll get on to him too. So that's good. Um, what Jenny said there too was we, we are making available some questions um, each week uh, from the sermons. Um, we're making those available to the church as well through the, the home group um, sort of network that we've got um, and also via the podcast as well. So um, yeah, so just uh, keep an eye out for them. Yes, Anne? Don't have to get Sheridan. Do you want to come and grab a mic? <laughs> or do you want to do it after the stream's finished? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fine. We'll do that. I'm happy to do it, but we'll do that. Yeah. I was just wondering. So after this uh, section of learning about the false Yep. Okay, cool. Liam's just asking what's next. 
after Jude. Um, I'm looking at doing Romans, the book of Romans. And, um, and so uh, looking at Romans, breaking it up into the, th- into the themes that Paul writes about. So that there'll be a lot of stuff about um, the gospel. There'll be a lot of stuff about... Um, you know, Paul writes about you know being identifying with with Christ, being crucified with Him, and all of those things. And then you know that's in verses five, sort of five and six. And then he moves into um, because of who Jesus is, this is the celebration we have. And then because of who He is, He gives us gifts to use in the church. So breaking it up into some th- into some smaller themes rather than you know doing essentially twenty six sermons, um, we'll break it up into themes. So that's that's what I'm looking at at the moment. I'm preparing for the moment. So. That's good. And we won't be doing, what, two verses per sermon this time? No. No, we won't be. Uh, Anyway. All right, cool. Just just let me just just sum up for us here. Um, You know, there there are so many opportunities, aren't there, in the days in which we live, to share um, Christ with people. I don't think there's... I can't remember a time when it's ever been... We've had greater opportunity to do that. Um, people are asking questions today as, as, they, as they never, I guess as never before, because we're living in uncertain, we're living in pretty anxious times and, uh, and many people are justifiably worried about what is going on in the world. And every question offers an opportunity for us to point people back to the only source of infallible truth. And that's the scriptures that is Jesus Christ. So let's not be discouraged. Um, Let's be made strong. Let's contend for the faith as as Jude tells us to. Let's stand firm for the truth. Let's pray for each other in that. Walk in obedience to the Lord and and go out and share the love of Christ with um, everyone we meet. Um, Both inside the church and outside of the church. Uh, and I think if we, uh, if we understand what Jude says, I think that we will, we will do that and become the church that he is, uh, is hoping to encourage in that. So let me pray and uh, we'll finish. Father, we thank you for uh, you, this, this little letter that we find just tucked away in the New Testament. Uh, but it, it's just full of so many useful things to us. It, it really packs a punch with the language that's used, with the encouragements for us as believers. We, you know, we get that sense of, of, of Jude just, you know, we, we sense his frustration, but we also sense his love and compassion for the church, and in particular, his love for the Lord Jesus. And so, you know, we are blessed, God, to be able to, to look at this, uh, at, this, at this little letter um, over the next few weeks. And so we do pray that your spirit will be speaking to us as we do that. Thanks, Father, again for your goodness to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On this next song we're about to sing, the chorus is, um, Let the glory of your name be the passion of the church. That's the first line. I think that's in, in now what we're going through at the moment. I think that's a really good statement for us as a church and as individuals is to let the glory of his name be the passion of what we do. And precious cornerstone, sure foundation, you are faithful to the end. We are waiting on you Jesus we believe your
bless this week and bless us as we go out and and may your spirit be with us with every interaction we have with people in jesus mighty name amen